Hello and welcome back to Making It Out of the Woods. Now sometimes I like to go out and hunt rainbows. Oh, there's one! But a note to any would-be rainbow hunters out there. If you get too distracted by all the lovely colours, you might just miss other treasures hiding in the undergrowth. Ooh, what's this? It's free project wood, that's what it is. Okay, lovely. Let's get this back to the den. Come on, it's not too far. Did you enjoy the fresh air? Let's get on with the project now. Okay, because this is an old fence post, it had all sorts of nails and stuff sticking out of it. Obviously, I don't want to mount that to the lathe and then later find out with my tools. Uh, that would be a bit disastrous. So I just had a good look over it, took out any nails I could see and kept my fingers crossed that there was nothing else embedded in it that would surprise me later on. I can see that somebody had already cut off the fence post at some point, so I don't think anyone will miss it. Just to say, if you are a landowner in the Highlands of Scotland and you've got a missing fence post, it wasn't me, it was like that when I found it. What you can see here is me finding the centre with my centre finder. So I need to find the centre with my centre finder, so I know where to put my stab centre before mounting it into the lathe. So in this shot you can see that I've brought the tail stock up which provides support to the blank and I'll get on with the business of turning it to round at one end and start to form a tenon. The tenon will then be used to mount it in the jaws of my chuck. There we go, that's a tenon cut and here's the blank mounted in my chuck. Now it's just about turning the blank to round and forming some sort of shape. I had to keep stopping the lathe because I don't want to completely turn this blank around. I need to keep some of the rustic edging and the slight square profile. So you'll see me stopping and starting the lathe and checking my progress. I'll leave you for a while whilst I get this shaped and refined. Unfortunately I can't leave you with machine sounds which I know a few of you asked for on my last video because I had a podcast playing in the background. And obviously I'm not allowed to broadcast a podcast on my YouTube video, uh, besides which it sounds like the Minions movie. <laughs> so I'll just leave you with some background music. Next time I'll pop the podcast on my headphones so that you can hear the machine sounds. Okay, I'll be back soon. <laughs>
Told you I'd be back. Okay, here I am, just roughly parting off where the top of the vase will be. It's just to give me an idea as I move forward, really. Now we're at the sanding stage. So, I didn't want this to have too smooth a finish, but I also wanted to protect my fingers because there are some rough edges. So I made myself a sneaky little sanding pad from one of those decorator sponge sanding pads. Um, and then I worked my way up through the grits, gently, on the lathe, and just by hand. Uh, until I sort of refined the shape and had it smooth to the touch but not too fancy. This section worried me because there was a split in the wood and I'd taken the edges off but I still thought there was a chance it could catch as I was polishing it. So this is where I turned to my Maker X, kindly gifted to me by Works a few weeks ago. You probably saw on my Instagram post that Works very kindly sent me a load of tools to try and this is the Maker X. It comes with all sorts of gubbins, I'll be using it more in upcoming videos but just for this video, I'll just show you the sanding section. So that's the handle. And here's some of the gubbins. That's a professional word for bits and bobs, which is also a professional word for mandrels and things. But one difference with the Maker X is that it's cordless. It's great actually for when you're in a workshop. I haven't always got PowerPoints available and I have to move things to try and reach across to what I'm doing and it can be a bit of a problem to get a corded rotary tool out. Now this system works like most rotary tool systems so you will be familiar with how it goes together I would imagine. The Maker X is really handy because it uses the 20 volt battery which works across the whole range of the PowerShare tools which actually turns out really well for me in a minute because obviously I've just opened this brand new tools set the battery in it isn't fully charged and I go to use it and realise I probably should have charged it but then I realise I've got other works tools and swapped the battery over. No problem and in no time I was ready to sand. The Maker X made short work of the sticky out bit and in no time at all it was smooth and safe for me to polish. I'm really happy with this little tool. It does have a soldering iron and all sorts with it. I'll definitely be showing you more of it on upcoming videos. But I've got it all dusty now. Honestly. Time to get the hoover out. I hoovered the Maker X and then I hoovered my workpiece to make sure all the dust had gone before I apply some sanding sealer. Now you shouldn't really sniff this stuff but it smells amazing. Obviously I've put my respirator back on at this point. Here I am just giving the whole workpiece a nice coat of sanding sealer. And whilst that dries, I'm going to have a word to you about Patreon. So Patreon is a platform that allows artists and creators like me to earn a small amount of income from the content that we create. If you'd like to be part of my Patreon community, please follow the links in my description below. And I'd be really excited to have you on board. I've got so many ideas for so many upcoming projects and I can't wait to share them with you. Oh, and by the way, existing patrons, you lovely people, your Christmas gifts are on the way. Thanks for listening. That's all the sanding sealer on. Now just time to gently sand it back with some high grits, around 400, just to finish the surface texture. Happy with that. Now it's time to part the end off and just do a small amount of hollowing. Not too much. It's not really going to be used as a vase. It's just ornamental. There we are, that's the last bit of evidence of the fence post gone. Shh, tell no one. back again. Okay, time to part it off. Just finishing it off with the Japanese saw. Hmm, quite nice. Very rustic. So there you go. Next time you're out rainbow hunting,
don't forget to check the undergrowth. You might find an old cut off a fence post and you can make yourself a lovely bud vase or weed vase or whatever it is you like to call them. Thanks to my patrons as always. Thanks for watching. Stay foxy and I'll see you on the next one.